Sweeney here and welcome to another TriggerCast. Today we have on Charles Kirkland, who is the founder of the Media Buyers Association, which can be found at MediaBuyerAssociation.com. Is that correct? That's on correct. And he's been a top affiliate, top vendor in ClickBank, well known as one of the elite top level paid media and traffic guys. And we're very excited to have him on today. Yay! <laughs> So Charles, I see you got your you got your setup there with your headphone and your mic. So hopefully yep. we should be getting some really awesome audio quality on this as well. Yeah, yeah. Now you have to understand, I have the technical ability to absolutely screw anything possibly up. You know, we've got the giant Yeti, blue. No, it's blue. I don't know if it's a Yeti. We got the giant thing here, and I've got the thing here, and who knows if it's even going to work. So I hope you're recording because with with my technology, it'll blow up. Something's going to go horribly wrong. It just does. But hey, you know, we'll just hit it and get it. I'm excited to be here. No worries. So with paid media and media buying, kind of what's – if someone's maybe never heard the term or they heard the term but they're not quite familiar with it, what's kind of a high-level uh, or, or more simple explanation of what it is? Okay. I think the easiest way to look at it is like we go to Yahoo every day, and on, on Yahoo you've got these little banners, and the reality of it is it's not Yahoo deciding, oh, we need to put banners up here and stalk you because you went to a Jenny Craig site. The reality of it is it's people like me and you and other people that go out and say, okay, we would like to buy inventory. So just imagine Yahoo has 20 gazillion impressions per day, and they actually break those up and sell them to people like me and you, and they say, hey, you know, you can have X space on this page for so many impressions and that's really how you buy traffic. That's a very simplified manner. It's a lot more detailed than that but from a very simplified manner you just basically lay out cash. They allow you to put you know, as long as you're not having anything hate, violence, discrimination, sexual stuff like that. You know, They allow you for the most part to put about anything you want to on there within reason. And now with media buying how does it start to break up? What does it look okay. like? Is it different types? Is it different sites? Is it you just go direct to Yahoo? I mean, I know there's obviously direct brokering as well. Mm -hmm. So what what does that kind of scheme of things look like? Okay, that really falls down into basically in the old days you would have like Joe Blow has a site and he's got a thousand impressions today and he's selling poodle grooming videos. And let's just say somebody would come up to him and go, Hey Bob, you know Joe, let me just buy this blah blah blah. And that's how it worked. And it really got aggregated within as the industry consolidated. You had the bigger players like Site Scout, which really relatively new in the overall scheme of traffic. They would come in and say, "Hey, we like your site. Um, we would like to buy traffic on your site. You know, give us all your traffic. We'll give you a percentage of the revenue share." And really, the same thing with AdSense. You know, Google has all this AdSense out there, and you know, people are like trying to like arbitrage and take advantage of it. Truth of the matter is, there's like literally hundreds of millions of sites every day selling traffic. The reality of it is, you know, it's all, and it, and it comes fragmented. I mean, you've got what's called CPV or contextual pop-ups. You've got display, which are banner pop-ups. You've got pay-per-click, which would be the ideas of Facebook, Google, MSN. You've got, yeah, and that's just like even, even those are three. You know, we've got like in-text ads. There's so many different varieties of traffic. A lot of it comes down to like what kind of, not all traffic works for every offer, and not every traffic network is right for you. That's the scenario it really kind of comes down to. So how do you kind of start to decide what traffic networks might be more fitting to your offer? How does how do you start to narrow down and focus? I mean, we're going to focus a bit more on CPV and uh -huh. PPV, so maybe we can use that as an example. Okay. But the flip side might be, so why why should I not go Google AdWords? Why should I go this route instead? Okay. Um, to be Google AdWords compliant, it's not hard, but they're not exactly fans of the direct marketing style that we do. So if you were to say, okay, I've got a squeeze page, send me your traffic to the squeeze page, they either opt in or they can leave and die. Kind of harsh, but that's really what we're saying. You know, get fork over your name and email or get lost. Unfortunately, Google has this thing, which is good. I actually am a huge Google fan. But what happens if your direct marketer, Facebook says, oh, Google says, oh, you need to have terms of service, disclaimers, privacy policies. You need to be fully, you know, you know, out, outright and out forth what you're going to do with their email, what kind of emails should they expect. Are they going to, you know, because back in the day we would have just a squeeze page, you know, sign up for X, Y, and Z. 
they didn't realize they were really giving you consent to send them daily emails so they buy or they die. So the reality of it is Google says, hey, you know, we don't want any of that. We the Google slaps happened, and a lot of marketers, you know, ended up going out of business because they that was their only source of leads. They only know how to use Google. And after it went out of you know Google slapped them, they were like lost. So what you need to look at is you really need to start with the offer. Actually, this is what we do. We start with a traffic source first, and then we find an offer to throw in that traffic source. Um, you know, we always say, you know, you're not going to go catch sharks in your small backyard pond. You know, you may say, hey, I'm, and that's where most people mess up. They go, oh, I'm in the niche of X, Y, and Z. Well, great. I would rather just go out in my backyard pond and say, guess what? I have a pond. I've got loose small fish in those. So you use small fish bait. Find your traffic source first. Find out what they want, and then you throw the bait in. But with that said, you know, depending on the type of offers you're going to be dealing with, like if you're dealing with a squeeze page, which is a traditional headline, opt-in box, big submit button, you really need to look that you may not be compliant with Google. Facebook has been banning people left and right. Um, we got one of our accounts banned last week. We got it reopened up and not something I ever want to go through again. Sweat and bullets on that particular one. And the reality of it is you need to look, you know, what traffic networks, traffic networks or sources would be friendly to your kind of stuff. So if you're in internet marketing, make money at home, business opportunity, um, Forex, financial trading, health, diet, fitness, golf, any of those like really major, major niches, I would recommend CPV just because A, the quality control in PPV is do you, basically do you have a pulse? Do you have a valid credit card? If you've got those two things, you know, the, the only other thing is they say you can't have an exit pop, maybe a few, maybe not autoplay video and audio, but other than that, you know, as long as it's not hate, crime, violence, or sex, they're all for it. So, you know, that's a great place to get started, especially if you're an online marketer and you're trying to do direct style where give me your name, give me your email, opt in or not. That's really a great place to start. If you're like a SaaS company where you say, okay, you know what? We've got a fully built out compliant site. We've got blog posts out to yin yang. We've got disclaimers on every page. Then you can look at going into Yahoo, MSN, Google. They're not going to really give you a problem. The issue you really need to look at, and this is um, I'm just telling people it's not what they want to hear. Unfortunately, Google, to get into Google in today's environment, you really need to be careful. You're paying, you can pay three, four, five, six dollars per click, and unless you've got, you know, like a really deep back end or a high profit margin, you're going to end up blowing through a lot of cash, a lot of capital, and not really get the results you want. So you have to understand: Do you have the back end? Are you, you know, being smart using Google? Google has ways that you can actually get traffic for cheaper, but for the average person going in who's filling out what they call the basic simplified account, you're going to end up overpaying, not knowing the difference from, like, where am I at number one, I'm at number two. And it really all comes down to are you tracking your metrics? Do you have a tracking system in place? If you've got that in place, it doesn't really make a difference what traffic network you go to because you can at least say, I'm making money, I'm not making money. These are the numbers, and I can fix it. Gotcha. So the learning curve is very steep with Google, and I know the yes. clicks are very expensive. And when you add that into the compliance, uh, maybe not issues, but the mm -hmm. compliance gates, maybe, yep. it generally ends up pointing towards. And then, so what's the difference between, so CPV, PPV, same thing, slightly different? Yeah, actually, um, my mentor, Gore Chowdhury, he coined it PPV. It's really called contextual, CPV, contextual pop-ups. He coined it PPV, and the word has stuck. So if you say PPV, you know, that's like the slang term, kind of like I got a Kleenex. Um, or, you know, but it's really contextual called CPV, or it's a contextual type traffic. And it's one of my favorites because it's not that I want to play dirty, but I want to play harder than everybody else. And one of the beauties of CPV is it allows you to pop up on different people's site. Now, let's just say that we're going to pop up on the home page. Give me a site. Just name any site whatsoever other than mine. We can go with uh, we can go with Yahoo. We can go with MSN. Okay. We can go we'll with, that. I, I, know, I know you used an example once of weather.com. Okay. Well, let's, let's use a good example. Let's use weather.com. If you look at the demographics of weather.com, you may discover it's predominantly female. And in fact, actually, I'm, I'm, from looking at that, and it may even be predominantly female from 34 to 45. The question you have is, okay, we know that we have a predominantly female audience. We could go in. The other example would be hyper-targeting like Weight Watchers. Predominantly female audience interested in losing weight. 
And if you look at the average Weight Watchers user, you can actually go just Google Media Kit, and you'll discover they're like 46 years old, make around $66,000 a year, fairly affluent, have kids typically out of school. And just Google something called Just Media Kit, just amazing stuff there. So you can look at that and determine who that who the visitor is. So when you're popping up on top of Weight Watchers, you're realizing, okay, this is a lady who's looking at losing weight by exercising. One of the biggest mistakes marketers make, they go, oh, well, the Weight Watchers, they want to lose weight. So here's some green acai coffee, Dr. Oz, oh, Oprah berries that are guaranteed to you know, make you slim down in five dress sizes in four days. You know, the reality of a, the lady who's the Weight Watchers is not looking at taking the Dr. Oz pill. You know, the girl who's looking typically to take doc, Dr. Oz pill, she's 22, 23 inside. She wants to lose 5, 10 pounds or something like that. It's typically a different mindset. And when you're popping on these pages, you have to have what is the mindset of the user because you can either be congruent with whatever's going on, which is continuing that conversation. Hey, I'm, I'm on this page. I want something. Yes, this pop-up is congruent, so therefore I feel like it's part of the site. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is like to pop up on weather.com where we may know the interest. You, you froze there for a second. If you have uh, Skype open or any Chrome windows you don't need open, you might want to try shutting those down. That might get us, okay. uh, get us a little bit better. Okay, let me close that out. And we should, okay, I think that's everything closed out at this point. All right, awesome. So okay. you're talking the mindset of the user. Yes, absolutely, because the reality of it is the mindset of the user is going to really determine whether they actually interact with your ad. If your ad continues the path they're currently on, which I'm trying to lose five pounds in five days or you know, I'm trying to like lose weight or whatever. So a good example of this, if you were to look at CPA, CPA offers, the best place in the world for high conversions is to pop up on a CPA offer order page. Most people pop up on like, you know, you've seen the page where the girl who's about a size zero has been photoshopped because she doesn't even look human anymore, holding the thing of Dr. Oz pills, you know, and the whole story of how they were found and this and that and the other. Everybody's popping up on that. Let them pop. Let them let them waste their money. I want to when somebody's on that site, I want them to click the order button. When they click the order button, I'm gonna pop up a coupon and I want to say, hey, guess what? Here's a coupon for free shipping. Or get your, you know, super magic aside berries. Not that I would ever promote that, but you get your super magic aside berry pills for two ninety five and free shipping. Pop that up in a coupon box. The average user's like, oh my gosh, it's a coupon box here for magic aside berry pills. Let me get that. You know, when you got congratulations, you know, you've just qualified for free shipping or whatever the case may be. You're going in because the intent may be, I want to lose weight. I'm going to take these pills. I'm going to buy these pills. But the intent of browsing the page is different from the intent of I'm on the order page. So when you're popping up on top of the order page, they've already got the credit card out. They, they're committed mentally. They're emotionally committed to getting this, and it's an easy way to come in and just snipe out sales from your competitors. And why do they allow uh, contextual pop-up you know, views on their order page? They don't have a choice. Basically, what happens, um, it's kind of like TV. Nobody really mm -hmm. watches TV for, you know, ads sponsor the TV shows. So Joe Blow comes here, and he's downloading some free games or coupons, whatever the case may be. But they end up agreeing to say, I will see a certain amount of pop-ups per week, per day, per whatever, you know, in exchange for your software. So typically it's a kind of that symbiotic relationship where, We'll give you pop-ups, and in exchange for that, you know, you'll get free software, free games, things of that nature. So, you know, and they don't, they, and it's not like, and the issues, is they're not out to, you know, kill the goose that laid the golden egg. You know, the pop-ups don't happen every single time. You may see four pop-ups a day, one pop-up an hour. So it just depends on where the traffic network has that inventory at. Gotcha. So can you give us a little bit more of a... Um, I guess a bit more neutral example. So SaaS would be, I would say, the most uh, nice example. Obviously, they're not as heavy in the direct response, mm -hmm. whereas the weight loss I know is a bit more extreme, especially yep. with the kind of uh, different uh, vitamins and such. But mm -hmm. maybe something more in the middle, uh, something Forex or maybe marketing related or even uh, fitness, but not, not quite as aggressive. 
Okay. Let, this is I think this is one that I won't say it's quite as aggressive, but let's just say register cleaners. Um, mm -hmm. Not really SAS, but you know it is a computer program. Um, one of the biggest issues most of the users, you know, they're sitting here on a PC. I mean, it's probably in everybody's mind your computer's slow. Unless you got a Mac, your computer's slow. Um, you know, so one of the things you want to look at is if a person Google's registry cleaner or speed up my computer. Anything that happens in this browser bar, which is called a query string, that whole thing up there is called a query string. You actually, the software will read the query string, and even though you may be at Google and you're typing in registry cleaners, if you ever look at the query string, it may be Google equals S equals registry plus cleaners plus whatever. The software will read that and it and it will go back to like traffic advance, lead impact, or media traffic and say, hey, there's somebody here who's looking for a registry cleaner. Do we have anything in our inventory that matches somebody bidding on that keyword? So if they do, then they will show your ad, which is basically a pop-up. Sometimes they can be full page. Sometimes they can actually pop, pop under a different page. And the key is when that pop-up happens, your page will now show on top of what somebody else is looking at. And the reality of it is I don't know if you can get any more hyper-targeted that. At the moment I'm looking for this, you're providing a solution to my problems. From a marketing standpoint, um, just give me a marketing domain, any marketing domain. Doesn't make any difference. Uh, even name a website or yeah, yeah, just you know, just any website, any the name of any marketer. Doesn't make any difference. Uh, strategic profits. Let's go rich. Oh man, he's gonna kill me. Can we do somebody else? <laughs> um, we could do James Woodmore. He does YouTube. Good. Right. Don't know him. That sounds like a winner. Um, right. Okay. So this is the reality. I have no clue what his domain is. Let's just say jameswoodmore.com. Well, does he have a support page? Probably. You know, most marketers do. The only people visiting your support page are people who are like really intent on buying or the person who's already bought. So I could pop up on James's homepage, which is fine, or I could pop up on his support page where I could actually have a free pop-up. And I know he's really big in YouTube. I could actually talk about, you know, discover the seven secrets of getting your YouTube video ranked overnight. I, and I, I know nothing about SEO, so I don't you know. I mean, Charles, that's bogus, you know, that what? I don't know. Um, but you could pop that up on his support page. Or for, attention, James Wedmore fans. So all of a sudden, it's like, you know, it's relevant, it's contextually relevant and correct from a timing standpoint. So because of that, let me grab something. I've got to grab a cough drop here. So because no of that, you know, all of a sudden it would be like, hey, this must be – not that we want it to pretend to be from James, but when you see that, it is contextually relevant to what you're looking at. Another example is does he have a member's login area? Is there like a login, page, you know, like a login button on his home page? You could pop up in his member's area. and You're building a list of his buyers, his prime buyers. Which is a little, you know, a little freaky. Um, you know, another thing is, do, is he promoting something? Is he, you know, like a sales page, an order page? Could you pop up on his order page? Could you pop up on his one-time offer? Could you pop up on his sales page and drop a cookie? Not that I would ever suggest cookie stuffing, but there, you know, that is that gives you the ability to do that if you needed it. If it was your own page, I would suggest it. But so it's it's kind of um, it's a different kind of targeting. To, to an effect because because of the medium of the ad the contextual pop-up mm -hmm. it's triggering at a different different stage in the site so you look at the process differently whereas normally you might laser target into all right what's their demographic how old are they what are they like buying all these mm -hmm. other things instead you're going more of that um, user intent I guess yes, or, um, absolutely. I think you called it mindset of the user so absolutely. That you're figuring I, I really like the support example that one was really good and then as you said, as far as the members log in, the order page, these are all more qualified, you know, traffic or users, and that's what you really want to go for. Absolutely, good examples like you could pop up on top of the Warrior Forum, which would get you people who are interested in online marketing and make money, or you could go to a WSO page, you know, WSO of the day, and you could pop up on. Now, the re there are some pages that you really can't pop up on just because the way the strings are set up. But potentially, if you knew where their download page was, you could pop up as a free bonus on their download page. And the reality of that is you're, in, you're building a list of more qualified buyers. So you know, we could actually just go out here and try to get as many people as we can, which is nice. Or we could go people who we know have, have whipped out a credit card, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, PayPal, and bought something. 
I mean, they, they have said, I'm a buyer, I've raised my hand, and you're just basically building a list of buyers. And the ROI from, the, from those people are exponentially higher than getting general Joe Blow leads on the list. Definitely. So with uh, CPV, what are kind of my general questions that come to mind are sites to use, the cost, and what the inventory looks like. Okay. Um, the inventory is stupidly insane for about the top 1,000 euros. Basically, I'm just going to use this example. You know, average person downloads toolbar. So let's just say at any given time, we have a million. I'm just going to use this for a round number. It's far more than this. But let's just say we've got a few million people out there with this toolbar. And if you look at, you know, like what are the number one, and a great example is going to the Alexa it's Alexa file. You can actually go to Alexa and you can download their top 100,000, actually top 1 million sites. I've got a piece of software that does it, by the way. So what happens, you can typically, as a general rule of thumb, if somebody's ranked high in Alexa, they're getting a lot of traffic. If they're getting a lot of traffic, that means you can get a lot of pop-ups in CPV. Now, the beauty of this, you can download that. And I'm going to tell you, like AWeber, um, if you're on Alexa right now, just type in AWeber, you know, rank what may be, 134, maybe 200. Yeah, if you want an easy 100 leads a day, just pop up on aweber.com, and there's like so much traffic. And the reality of it is, you know, if somebody, you're on Aweber, you've got the toolbar installed. This pop-up says, hey, are you interested in email marketing, blah, 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 opt in here for your free report. The beauty of this, there's a boatload of traffic coming from aweber.com, getresponse.com. Those, you know, those are high traffic sites, so therefore they will have a lot of CPV traffic. Now the problem comes in is you're only going to see the pop up one time per domain. So let's say that we're sitting here, I pop up. You come to the site ten times, you will only see the banner for that site one time. You can actually limit. And you say, okay, I, I want this ad to be seen by one person three times per day, two times per day, you, one time, five times. You can limit how many times you, you basically are plastering your ad in front of a user. So the concept is, you know, you may want to say, I want, I want this ad to be seen three times per day by, you know, each person max. So if you've seen the ad one time, then you come back to it, you may see a different inventory. So it may be Bob's pop-up now. You come back later in the day, it may be my pop-up. So the reality of it is, you, you know, it's not like like I'm going to hit you one, two, three, four with the same banner. You're going to see my ad, somebody else's ad. You know, the ads rotate from that standpoint. And the beauty of this is, you, you know, if you want to list a highly targeted list of people who are interested in AWeber, you've got it. These people are interested in email marketing. So then your follow-up should be and your funnel should be, what is something I've got that's email marketing related? Like, you know, you couldn't say, hey, now that you've you know, got an email, you know, you, you have opted in, would you like to learn how to do, you know, graphics design? Would not would not work with those people. So you build a list based on a theme, and then you promote themed products to that list. So it sounds like um, as far as the inventory and the targeting, um, kind of to, to summarize, mm -hmm. you choose some of – you have to choose from the top sites so that there is overlap and there'll yep. be enough inventory there. So as a rule of thumb, you kind of go with the top uh, how many sites? Um, typically, we look at, well, this is what we do. We take high traffic sites, and we break mm -hmm. those. Like if you're in the top 1,000 of Alexa, we break those out into individual categories. So, you know, AWeber would be in a campaign. Get Response would be in a campaign. I can tell you the use, and this is where it gets interesting. So AWeber, Get Response, Eye Contact. You would think Eye Contact users would be internet marketers. No, Eye Contact users are business people. You know, same thing. Constant Contact. If you pop up an internet marketing, make money, you know, biz op, whatever, on those sites, you're gonna get a very poor response because that is not who their core base is. So you so break it, the. It sounds like on the initial level, you will target to their interests. But then on a yep. deeper level, you start breaking it down by interest, by uh, the demographic. Absolutely. So you've got AWeber, you've got Get Response. So you break all those down, you know, into high category or each category. High traffic sites go in their own category, and then you've got like this big group. So you may end up with like 5,000 URLs that may get one or two clicks every day, you know, just because they're like maybe between the Alexa 100,000 and 10,000. So you've got all those lumped in together because they're not getting enough traffic for you to like spend time analyzing it every day. So you just throw those in there, kind of this big broad lump, and then you just let it roll. 
So would you be handpicking these sites, or is there kind of a way within the traffic platforms to just kind of search by interest? Um, actually, it's funny. They always give you the ability, like if you go into like media traffic, lead impact, you can actually search by. You can say, hey, email marketing. It's going to like plug in a bunch of sites. Those are great, but I like to actually, and this is the thing, when, when you're, you say well, it's only like 1.5, let's just say $0.02 cent per pop-up. It doesn't sound like a lot. Do 10,000 pop, 10, pop-ups a day. And it begins to add up very fast. And I give an example. One time I let Walmart.com get into my little pop-up. You know, it just wasn't paying attention. I grabbed a bunch of sites, threw them in there. Um, you know, we had like a couple thousand pop-ups, probably 20 minutes maybe. And I'm like, crap. You know, we just like blew through a lot of opportunity. When at two cents a pop, it adds up fast. So what you have to look at that is you're really paying, you know, for, you 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 even though it's only two cents, you're really paying for every pop up, and because of the volume, the insane volume of these things, you can go through a lot of money fast. So that's why you want to like hand target these. Make sure you look at them. Typically, we've got a, we've got a software. We download the Alexa. We start file. We start searching by keywords. Like okay, you know how many URLs have this keyword in it? Like could be email. We bring those into a group and we look at them. Okay, these you know group together, and then we kind of like okay, this would work, this would work, this would work, this would not work. You know, like emailspamdatabase.com would not be anything I'd want to pop up on by any stretch of the imagination. So pretty much run run them through by hand and then grab them. And then with that list, are you? Um, so we're taking the Alexa top, we're mm -hmm. using the software, we're kind of searching through it. We're going to hand curate it and groom it a little bit. Say we end up with – how many sites will we end up with? Um, let's say we end up with – let's just say we're starting a campaign and we have like 30 URLs. Okay. That we've got 10 of them that are going to be high traffic, <laughs> Aweber, get response, constant contact, eye contact, email chimp. We know we've got those groomed out in their own separate campaign. We take the remaining and we throw those in a campaign, but this is where it's going to get exciting. Um, because we're using you know the ad software – Aweber.com. What would happen if we were trying to snipe out the URL? What would happen if I had Aweber.co? Remember, this software is happening now like fractions of a second. We're doing pretty much, just imagine, real-time bidding. It's looking at Aweber.co. Hey, CO matches. It's going to give the guy who's got Aweber.co as his you know, bidding on, give him preference over the guy who's got Aweber.com, especially if they're bidding the same price. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what would happen if you had Aweber.c? Would that cause a pop up before aweber.com? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I follow here exactly. Okay, okay, okay. Let's take a quick. Let's do a quick little game here. Um, look up in your query string. Everybody on the audience right now, look in your query string, and you've got like probably Google.com or something.com. Okay. Well, I'm, on, I'm actually on Alexa.com, but I can okay. pull up aweber.com. No, no, Alexa.com is good. This is this is actually providing I can actually type. We've got Alexa.com. Okay. Remember the software that we're using that allows us to buy this traffic. You know, it doesn't know. It it basically just goes through this giant database. Now, what would happen if if you're bidding on Alexa.com and I started bidding on Alexa.co? Would that be a closer match in the software than Alexa.com? It would be a closer match because you know I've got less words to match. Basically, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. I would yeah. come in and snipe you out. What happens if you're bidding on Alexa.c? Well, you and if you're paying the same price, remember this ad, ad software, they're out to make money. So, you know, they're not waiting to say, oh, let's see, you know, what the full URLs and, and figure something out. This pretty much is real time bidding for the most part, if that makes sense. So they're going to come in and whoever's got the shortest matching URL dot would work. So if I came in and said Alexa.c, I could actually snipe you out. So just imagine if the you, so what we do is we take the the campaigns. Now this is not worth doing for if you got a boatload of campaigns that have very little traffic. But if you're bidding for Aweber and you've got a lot of competition, take Aweber and divide it up into like Aweber.c, Aweber. and then maybe Aweber itself, maybe www.aweber. You know, you start looking at all the variations in that. And if somebody's using like a subdomain like plus.google.com, you can bid on that subdomain as well. So you can come in there, basically, you know, come up with shorter, shorter variations until you're the winner. 
So, you know, I could be bidding on aweber.co and you're looking in the traffic software and you're bidding on aweber.com. You're like, hey, there are only two other people bidding on aweber.com. I should be getting a boatload of traffic, right? Because you're only two bidders. People like me are sniping it out at aweber.c. And because you're not bidding on it, you're like, this is dumb. It doesn't work. I can't get any traffic from it. So you can basically shorten those URLs. We have software that does it. A bunch of people have software that can do that. So we shorten out those URLs, and it gives us a huge competitive advantage. Gotcha. And, and how does the um, – if you are using the sub-URL, for example, aweber.com or, yeah, aweber.com slash order, so that person's mm -hmm. going to get sniped out by – by you, or how does that how does that yeah. factor into this mix? Yeah, let's just say we've got um, order.aweber.com. Okay, if you're on there, I just plug in on my traffic. You know, when we're loading up these URLs, because you can load up URLs or keywords. So I would load up order.aweber. order.aweber.co, order.aweber.com, order.aweber, and then I'd even go order.aweber and then remove the R. You know, I would even shorten it down. Because so, the issue is I want to come in and snipe it before anybody else can get it. So the key is you want to be aggressive. You need It's really about being smarter, if that makes sense. You, you can create 27 variations from every single URL or query string. So just imagine, you know, like if you were going to bid on, um, I'm going to say ebates.com. You know, they're literally, you could turn that, that just ebates.com into 27 variations. So just imagine if you went through, okay, ebates is making money or AWeber, you can go through Aweber and like literally pull every page out of the Aweber site, every URL out of the you know out of their website, start chopping it, slicing it, and dicing it and bidding on it. So literally, you would come up with like hundreds and hundreds of variations off of one domain because you're bidding on the domain, all these variations, all their interior pages, all the support pages, the member login pages. You can just like pull that down and start bidding on it, and you're just like literally sucking out the traffic. Very interesting. The the sniping aspect. So does that only kind of come into play at the more higher level, or is that common practice? Um, I don't know. I've been doing it since like day one. Depends um, how competitive the term is, I guess. Or the it, URL. it is. It is. I mean, I can give an example. Let's just say ESPN.com. You'd have like a bunch of people promoting, you know, bidding on ESPN.com. So you'll find a lot more sniping on that. Where if you go to Joe Blow's, you know, HotDogDiner.com, there may be you may literally be the only bidder on that domain, so there's no need to have to worry about that. If it's a competitive domain, we do it. If it's a high ROI domain, we do it. Um, the issue is it's you know kind of a time-intensive thing to do, so it's something that when you – I mean, it justify. literally – Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so I kind of – just from what you said, I, I sorted in into for my – you know I kind of write notes on the side, mm -hmm. and it's uh, – I consider it level A, so that's your high traffic sites by themselves, and then everything else basically goes into level B, which is sites that get enough traffic that they're worth targeting, but they're not yeah. worth taking the care to, you know, really snipe or microanalyze. I mean, maybe with those sites, I imagine there's tracking and such, and if you see that one is killing it for you, uh -huh. then you might split it off into its own campaign, but... Absolutely. You know, good example, um, like if you go to like imreports.com, you know, it's like this whole thing, like where they list all the different gurus and whatever and product names. You know, you can go through there and spend days like scraping out stuff. You know, the reality of it is very few of them are going to get any traffic. You know, most internet marketing products are like, you know, one-hit wonders. So like if there's a big product launch, you know, you can bid on that product launch and you're going to get a boatload of leads that week. After that week, you know, people have moved on to something else, so therefore it doesn't get a lot of volume. A good example is like Empower Network. Um, you know, I, I love the Empower Network. It's a great place. Um, and uh, from I don't really do anything with it, but I used to. And what we were doing, we were getting insane ROI. We were bidding on the checkout page for Empower. So therefore, doing that, we were coming in just sniping out people who were literally getting ready to make five, ten, you know, five thousand dollars worth of purchases would now be cookie to Charles. So, you know, therefore, we didn't have to have a huge volume. Just because of the pop or? Yeah, we were popping up on the checkout page. Now, this is the issue. A lot of networks have problems with you popping up on checkout pages. I mean, it's probably frowned upon. So if you were looking at um, the full domain, you know, let's say order.php, we're, we're bidding on blank domain dot, you know, slash order, you know, domain slash ORD. 
you know, so we were popping up. We were basically sniping out the URL page for people actually got to the full checkout page, where normally they will not let you self-target pages like that. Gotcha. So, uh, so why, why did you uh, stop doing that? Um, basically, it just got t a friend of mine now runs it, so therefore mm -hmm. it's hard to say. You know what? I can't, I, I joined it. I, well, Greg Davis was promoted. And I'm like, okay, pretty neat. So I joined it in like two weeks. I became like number seven or eight on their leaderboard. It's interesting, but a friend of mine runs it, and I don't feel comfortable doing that, especially when somebody I know runs it. Um, so therefore, it's just not, you know, and the reality is it's just not that much money for me. Got you. Now, I'm curious. So a lot of what we just touched on kind of covers what I would say it's, it's hard to find the right terms for this stuff and how to divide this because it does seem like kind of a gray area. But I would consider what we were talking about to be interest level targeting. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the one side, and that's easy. We search, you know, email. We find these different sites. We use these tools to find related, you know, sites to email. Yep. Now, if we go to the other side of the angle, and now we're looking for more... Um, say I'm looking for someone who's 35 to 55. Maybe mm -hmm. they own their own small business or they're a consultant and they're interested in marketing and SEO. Mm -hmm. How are we going to go after that person and, and find out sites that might be related to that person? Okay. The big, first thing is find out where do they hang out at. You know, because typically there's always like the form. You know, like I'm just going to make a form like like, like digital point or like SEO Moz. Well, like I guess it's just Moz now. So mm -hmm. I would like look at like where would these people be in general. And once I found that, then I would like I would have a pop up on top of Moz.com. So it would be like you know, are you a struggling SEO consultant looking to get more clients and higher rankings? You know, enter your name and email here for a special, you know, seven page report on how to get more clients and more rankings in as little as 24 hours. Totally made that up on the spot, so I have no clue how legitimate that is. But the reality is you want to look at where they're hanging out. Once you've found where they're hanging out, then you start popping up on that. And where you, where you software like CPV Labs, there are other, like Tracking 202 will do it. doesn't make a difference. Um, I just prefer CPV Labs because when we're looking at it, most people – and go back to like um, – I, mean, I think a good example is like AWeber. You would think I would get the same ROI on AWeber.com as a subdomain on AWeber.com. Truth matters, different even in the same URL, different variations of that name will give you different ROIs. So if you want to look at it from that standpoint, the person coming to the home page is probably not as qualified. The person who's in the forum every day, highly qualified. So we use different tracking software so we can look at the ROI for every variation of that keyword. And strangely enough, some keyword variations don't ROI out out as much as others but now I'm still on on a growing it level for example okay. I mean in our other example is pretty easy to find a lot of sites and mm -hmm. you know say 30 different sites I know for example I'm trying to from what I'm familiar with media buying for example drug drug report like mm -hmm. you might have a weight loss offer and you might know yep. that drudge report hits the demographic that you're looking for Conservative, angry so, white males. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm curious as to if you have one of these other offers, you know, besides finding the main place where they hang mm -hmm. out, that really top level, how would you find some of these other sites? Like is there, you know, a way or a software or something that you use combining Alexa or Quantcast to run these sites yep. through and pull demographics or – Yep. Um, a place called avportal.com. Corey is like a programming ninja. Um, we go to avportal.com, start plugging stuff in, and we also use um, like AdBeat. You can go into AdBeat and find out where has a certain banner been running, and AdBeat will like spit out the exact page, not just the domain, but the exact page. So you can actually go into AdBeat, say where has this page been running, create a URL list, see how long they've been running, and then we take that and start bidding on it. We also use ISPionage. Hey, are, you, are you familiar with ISPionage, by the way? I've heard of it. I have not. Uh, I don't think I've cracked into it. I, I think I've been in AdBeat, though. I'm pretty okay. Sure I've been Ad, I love AdBeat. I love ISPionage on a whole different level. You plug in the domain. It's really for pay-per-click. But you plug in the um, – let's just plug in any domain, and ISPionage is going to spit out a list of competitors – and how much money they're spending in pay-per-click every single month. 
the I wish you could I wish I could share my screen because you would freak out over this. So you like can. we would you can okay. actually if you okay. I don't, I don't know if we want to go through the the technical side of that. I don't know if we want to get hung up on that. But if you look to the okay. left, there's a screen share button, and I can. Uh, Should I just screen share? Okay. I'm going to screen share the, and I think I've got the right. I think I'm got the right desktop here. Let's start screen share. And open. Let's see. I might not have to be. Might not have to be able to do this. So who knows? No, you. Yeah, no, you have it right now, actually. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, so you're you can see what I'm seeing now. Do you see a place yeah. called ISB? Okay, let's type in Moz M O Z dot com. Um, let's go ahead and say that we're SEO competitors. I know nothing about SEO, by the way. Um, plug in I SEO. I can teach you. I tell you, it, it almost call. Okay, let's look at this. We have we can look at they've spent about a hundred thousand per month, and we can tell they've dropped off lately. Not a big deal. Okay, this is what I'm most interested in, the competitors right here. So I can look at their competitors who are people paying to be, you know, to be in this world and the people who are organically just ranking. Guess what? I got 1,794 domains that are paying in Google, and we've got like 304 in Yahoo Bing. So we could easily come down here. And we can sort these, by the way, so we can actually sort by advertiser, um, keyword overlap, doesn't make any difference. But just imagine we're like, we're in the SEO world. We can come down here. We can click on the good old-fashioned export button. I can export out these URLs, all 1,700 of them, bring them into a spreadsheet, slice them, dice them, clean them up, go through which ones will work, which ones I don't think would work in any way, shape, or form. And we've got a list of 1,794 other SEO competitors. We could come over to the organic side here. Let's just look at like SEO volume, and you could actually now, obviously, like you know, like about eBay, Walmart. Those really aren't going to be the people you're needing. You may have to go back to like day, you know, maybe page three, page four, sometimes even further. I mean, you got like friggin' twelve thousand of them. Um, so you can look at that, and all of a sudden, you can develop a list of actual keywords. That's my favorite way to find PPV competitors. Because I can see people, if they're spending money in Google, that means you know they have a, they're they're getting traffic, they're getting traction. I want to go ahead and like come in and sweep some of that out there and um you know borrow some for me. Gotcha. Yeah. No. So that 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 kind of fills in the blank there because that way you can try to find the few big main places they hang out. Mm -hmm. Then you pull in the uh, competitor competitive research tools, and then bam, now you have your list. Yep. And now you know where else to go. Absolutely. So you know, I mean, we I, even though like I know nothing about SEO, we could probably get a list of maybe 200 good places that SEO people hang out, like SEO Land, SEO Watch, all those places. Slice them, dice them, put them in the campaign, and even you know we can even run them against, compare them in Alexa. Say, okay, where do they rank from an Alexa standpoint? It doesn't make a difference. Or you could just throw them all in one campaign, you know, put in $20, see which ones are getting the most tractions, which ones are getting the most clicks, move those into brand new campaigns. And the reality of it is if there's traffic online, PPV is perfect for it. The place that PPV falls apart is like when people get into these micro niches, like I am into – I'm trying to think of like a micro niche. Let's just say we're in a, in a micro niche of growing sunflowers. You know, it's probably – you're, you're going to be starving for the volume. As long as you're in a major mainstream niche, tons of opportunity, tons of opportunity for CPV and PPV pop-ups. Gotcha. So um, cost of CPV, I know you had kind of mentioned it, but I would, I would like to get, at least from your perspective, mm -hmm. a few benchmarks as far as costs and maybe what you can expect for clicks. So say out of 100 banners, you'll get this many clicks – and what yeah. conversions typically look like, or what you want your squeeze page or sales page to be converting at. So cost, yeah, typically, click, convert. Okay, at a, at a base rate, you're dealing with two cent a click, maybe 1.5, depending on how you do it. And that's for U.S. traffic. You could actually go get international traffic a little cheaper. The next thing you can do is what's called run up network, which is show my ad to everybody under the sun um, I do not suggest this because you can could, you could nail 100,000 clicks in no time, blow up your server, and you know therefore not have any money. The easy thing to do is go in 
when you're bidding, you may have four, five, six, seven, sometimes nine other people bidding, may, maybe even more. And the like pay per click, you bid a dollar, and competitor number two is bidding fifty cent. You would only pay like you know so much more than guy number two. PPV, if you're bidding ten cent and I'm bidding one cent, they don't adjust your bid. You know they're out to make money. So in doing that, whenever you're dealing with pay per click, you know you need we use software that goes in every day. Like where's the bid at, and it will adjust the bid down to like you know a penny above number two. Come back in. Where are we at? You know, so it's constantly adjusting that bid. Um, if you're just getting started, put in a couple URLs. You know, you number one gets all the traffic. Number two gets some of the traffic. Number three gets a little bit of traffic. Number four, not even on the radar. You need to wait for where number one. Once number one blows his traffic budget, then it allows number two to become number one, and until they blow their traffic budget, then number three will come in at number one. If that makes sense. So once you've once you've exhausted your budget, I mean, you know, you want to spend ten thousand dollars a day in PPV. It's it's so incredibly simple. Um, it's actually a whole lot simpler than, I, than I'd like you to know. Um, the reality of it is, you know, when you blow your budget, somebody else moves into that spot. And the key is, and this is interesting, not all offers convert at the same time. So what we found, being number one during certain times, it doesn't make any difference. Our prospects aren't there at that point. We get our conversions maybe from 6 to 9, from 12 to 2, and from 8 to 10. That's where we get our most conversions. So those times we want to be number one. And because ROI can be so high, you can actually get very aggressive to bid to be number one. You know, most people bid throughout the entire day number one, which blows out their budget by the time, you know, that peak window hits in the evening. So you really need to know what is your peak window when you know it's not about opt-ins, it's about when do you get your biggest conversion? Where's the biggest ROI conversion at? So you can expect to pay anywhere from like when we're doing pop-ups, you know, these pop-ups are like full page. Sometimes they're just you know like small smaller windows. You know, so we're popping a squeeze page, getting in or pre-sale page, getting people to take action. And the beauty of this and this is kind of where the beauty of it happens. You know, the closer you can match your intent to the intent of the page you're popped up on, like you can actually take – we've got software that will take the background out of the page and embed it on your page. So you've got this little box with your offer, and the background is the page you're popping on top of. Now, the conversion rates through that are sky high because it looks like a normal pop-up banner, like, you know, like your regular exit pop. So, you know, you can get ROI from that. I mean, you know, when we're getting leads, I do not want my leads over $2. I want my leads under a dollar. If I've done my job right, you know, a couple years ago, we were still getting leads for $0.34 cent from PPV. Now we're up to around a dollar, and the reality of it is there's so much volume here. As long as you're in a big mainstream niche, you can get a boatload of leads, but it depends on you, – you can't just go shotgun blast everything. You have to micro-target your pop-ups to the highest traffic sites to make it match. We make the font match, the color match, the background match, the opt-in box. If they're using a red headline, we're using a red headline. If they're using a 12 Tahoma font, we're using 12 Tahoma font. We make our pages match the background of the high traffic sites we're popping up on. And so because now, of that, I I kind of want to kind of want to. You're definitely on a very advanced. You know, so most people that get into it, their mm -hmm. their headlines not going to match. You know, their backgrounds not going to blend in. So that's where I kind of want to say for the average person that's getting started, Charles Kirkland wants a dollar a lead. Where should this person be hoping to be at, or what's what's the kind of does, does that kind of make sense? Like, because they're not oh, going to yeah. be as optimized as you, obviously. Yeah. I mean, when you're getting started, if you've got two dollars lead, I mean, I know people that spend hundreds of dollars and don't make it, and now don't even get leads. Um, it really depends on, like, you know. And I'm giving an example, like using lead pages. I love lead pages; they work great for pop-ups, by the way. If you've got the plain white lead pages with a headline and the little opt-in box with a little border around it, that's all you need to get started, you know. And the reality of it is, different niches will be will have a different competitiveness. Like if you're in Forex, your leads may be three dollars. If you're in internet marketing, your leads may be a dollar fifty, maybe two fifty. You know, if you're in a mass market niche, you know, so your leads will go up and down depending on what you're targeting, how many other competitors, what time you're popping up. Because the big thing is, if you're pop, if if you want to be number one, that's great. But remember, like number one pays ten cent, number two's paying three cent. 
you know, I'd rather come in and be number two and pay 3.4 cents because you're bid in tenths of the pennies. So, like, you know, it's not like 10 cent, 9 cent, it's 9 cent point seven. I would rather come in and be number two, you know, paying 3.9 cent than being number one at 10 cent. Because, I mean, give an example. If you're paying 6 cent and I'm paying 3 cent, you've doubled your lead cost. You know, that's kind of the big thing to understand. You've literally doubled your lead cost. So even if you get – our conversion rates are exactly – if they're exactly the same, your lead cost will be twice as much as mine. So that means you've got to double your ROI because your lead cost just doubled. My ROI for the lead may be half of that because we were bidding less. So, you know, there are games you can go in there where you could be number two, be number one certain times, be number two the second time. You know, you kind of focus on that. And yes, that's advanced. I, I wish I had like a piece of software that did all of it for you. You I'm guys need to build you, that. I'm assuming you have one? You don't have one? Actually, I do, but it's <laughs> not shared. Um, yeah. You know, it's one of those things. It's uh, Yeah, unfortunately, we build it. it being the rocket scientist we are, we built it when I had a PC, and my PC blew up, and I hated it. I'm like, I'm never buying a PC again, so I got a Mac, um, and I made it a point I would not use any Windows software. So I used to use, like, front page and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it made me kind of – I'm in the process of getting this fixed for PHP, so – but the reality of it is, you know, I mean, you can you can get like Aft Portal does probably about eighty percent of what we do. You know, they can come in there with the software, slice it, dice it, put it in groups, put it in campaigns. How do you how do you spell that one? Um, a F F Portal P O R T A O dot com. Aft Portal, as in short for like affiliate. Yep, and that is like the it, 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 that's like the best money we ever spend for traffic. Um, it does a boatload of stuff: pay per click, keywords. I mean, the reality is, like, you know, we're just talking URLs. You can also go in there and, like, pull keywords right out of Google, pull them right there out of App Portal, slice them, dice them, chop them up, turn them into URLs, and go with it. Now, just to bring it back, so for the average person, you're going to look to spend around two cents a, a pop. Yeah, and that's the base price. Leads should be ideally around $2. Is there kind of an average you like for click through rate on the ad? Or um, is it, are people opting in exactly within the ad? What's basically so. the the page pops up and they literally opt in within that page. So when you're looking at that, it it depends. And we're we, I don't really care about conversion. Don't really care about the cost per click. I'm looking at the ROI. The only thing I'm concerned about is the ROI. So I don't care if I got to spend twenty five. You know, we've got some that are a dollar per pop, but the ROI is there. So you know, like give an example. If you're doing a you're you're getting a consulting client. You know, somebody's about to spend twenty five thousand dollars with you. I don't really care that it's a dollar a pop. The fact that I just pulled you off strategic coach is good for me. The reality of it is, you know, your prices will vary. Don't get hung up on cost per click. Don't get hung up on conversion. Is your ROI there? And that's where you need CPV Labs or a high end tracking software to be able to give you those numbers. And for the for the person who's just getting started, I mean, I know some of these softwares can be kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. How much of they? How much of it can they do it? You know, whether free trials or free software. You know, what's what's kind of the? Hey, I want to do this, but I don't want to mm -hmm. spend you know a thousand dollars tomorrow. I just want to get my feet wet. What's yeah? What's that you know, route like? All the traffic networks, like media traffic, you know, traffic advanced lead impact. All of them have like conversion tokens, so you can have like a lead page or just I mean, even on just a basic squeeze page. And whenever somebody opts in, as long as you've got that token on the thank you page, it will say, hey, you know, you made a conversion. And when you make a sale, you have a different token that says, hey, you've made a sale. So you can get started without any tracking software. It just – it's one of those things from a – from if you're doing one campaign, yeah. If you're doing two campaigns, not a problem. But when you're starting to literally get hundreds of campaigns going or even dozens and you're trying to scale them, you really need that kind of software. So you can get started like even HyperTracker can handle CPV. Ad tracks goal can handle CPV. Really, any tracking program can handle CPV traffic. Now, what uh, what are your main CPV sites to use, or CPV Tra sites that you like? Traffic Vance, Lead Impact, Media Traffic, Fifty on Red. Really, the, you know, if you had to say which four, you know, all, you pick any one of those four, they will crash your server for you. I mean, they there's like no traffic shortage of traffic. Impact Media Traffic. Media traffic, and then what's yep. the last one? 50 on red. It's like gambling 50 on red. Yeah, that's what I figured. 
That's funny. It's an interesting site name. Yeah, they've got, they've got a huge amount of traffic. And now to shift gears a little bit, um, because I did watch the site scout video. Where does mm -hmm. so that site scout and you know? So we talked a lot about CPV. Do you kind of want to talk a little bit more about uh, traditional media? You know, do we have time to talk a little bit more about traditional media buying and like uh, using things such as site scout? Can give, can we do about ten more minutes and let that be it? Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, like site scout, or even just from the standpoint. Site scout, they buy remnant traffic. So basically, traffic that isn't sold elsewhere, they've got like kabookles. I mean, there's no shortage of traffic online. So site scout comes in and they will say, like, if you wanted to be on the Drudge Report, you know, you would look at a Drudge Report, you know, how many impressions they're getting, like 20 gazillion impressions, and then, like, what is the, you know, the CPM. And then, so basically, you would load in your banner in site scout and say, bid on US. And you can even go like, I want people that own a house in the U.S. and you know meet this criteria. So people who have interested in X, Y, and Z. So you basically pull that down, and it's RTB, which is real time bidding. So basically, they would go out and they would say, okay, this person matches. Imagine if you had like a giant bag of rice, and you only wanted the grains of rice that were yellow. So basically, it would shift through all the grains of rice and pull out all the grains of rice that were yellow. Same thing with uh, Science Scout. You basically go in there, this is my criteria, I want it on this site, and the problem that you have to watch out for is a lot of times you're buying traffic, they bundle traffic. Kind of like AT&T, how they bundle your phone and cell and everything else. You may be bidding on one domain, and you have to be, make sure that you pay attention to what you're doing, because you'll actually, your ads will be seen on other domains as well. So one of the things we like to do is like we create an ad. I like, this is counterintuitive, I like high traffic sites. And I like to create ads that either stand out like a sore thumb or blend into the site and appear to be content. If your site blends in and looks like content, your click-through rates will be sky high. You know, I mean, like, give an example. If you've got a 4% click rate on a banner, you're rocking it. 4% on a click-through rate on a banner that's got a high traffic site, you're killing it. The key is making sure your banner looks, appears to be content. So what we like to do is go in there. Are they using a size 14 aerial font? Guess what? My banner is going to have size 14 aerial font and appear to be part of the content because nobody clicks on ads. If your background is black, my ad is black with white text. If your background is off-white, I've got an off-white banner. So we want to, we like to create banners that mimic the site so well it appears to be content. Because if you've got a banner, you know, if one person out of a thousand clicks on the banner, you know, that's that's about your average banner click through. When you make it look like content numbers come totally different. And now with that uh, with that with site scout and those kind of sites, mm -hmm. is there any other particulars to watch out for? Any best practice best practices? Um, you know, with anything like Site Scout, you know, it's really just the, the domain that you kind of go to log buy your traffic. So what happens is they're getting their traffic, they're getting numbers from companies that um you know like independent mom and pop sites. And I'm not saying that people will inflate their numbers or like have bogus traffic, but you need to watch out. You know, we like to look out, is there bot traffic? I mean, if we're looking at something, we know the conversion rate of this, and we got, let's just say, a thousand clicks, and everybody's using IE5, which is an old version of Internet Explorer, it may be bot traffic. If all the clicks are coming out of the same, you know, IP range, if we're by, the key is you want to make sure you're not a victim of fraud. Click fraud is everywhere. I know people get upset about, oh my gosh, I could be a victim of click fraud. You're going to be a, click, a victim anyway. Facebook has it. Everybody has it. doesn't make any difference. The magic is you want to make sure you're using tracking. You want to make sure that the IPs that are coming to you are not the same IP over and over and over and over. Um, we've bought traffic. I'm not going to use Site Scout, but an example, we've bought traffic from people before like, oh, you know, we get 40,000 uniques a month. Well, you, you know, you put your banner on there, and all of a sudden, all the traffic's coming from Vietnam. Yeah, you may be getting 40,000, but let's face it, 40,000 Vietnamese are not looking at coming to your site for your exercise videos. Just just saying, not going to be there. So you want to make sure that you've got unique IPs. You want to make sure you've got tracking. We use Improvely when we're doing anything other than CPV. Um, another product that peop that's really impressive is called ClickMagic. It's really up-and-coming tracking software, but we like to use that because we want to look at was there a click fraud? 
you know, when we're setting up these URLs, we use the whole Google UTM parameter. So we've got like campaign source and everything. All this data gets passed back into Google Analytics. It gets passed back to our tracking program. So when we're looking at things, if things look suspicious, we go back to the traffic network and say, you know, we bought traffic, but something doesn't look right. You know, all these IPs were the same. Um, you know, they had all the clicks happen within a 10 minute period. So you want to look at that kind of stuff. And the key is like when you're buying traffic from, you know, even Google, even Google's display network, when you're buying traffic, make sure that you basically, same way, the more, the granular you can become with your traffic buying, the higher your ROI will be. People like to like load in hundreds of domains, throw stuff to it and see what works. We like to make sure we go in granular, like this domain, this URL, it's good. And, you know, part of it is it's one thing to get a click. It's another thing to get a conversion. So just because you've got a click doesn't mean that the person even clicked your, clicked your banner was even qualified. Like in mobile traffic, a boatload of our traffic we get from mobile, it's, you know, we I, bogus clicks. I even click on the banners myself sometimes, not meaning to. So, you know, definitely keep that in mind. And the reality of it is you want to just, you know, make sure you're looking at the traffic, make sure your number is legit, know your numbers, and realizing if you're getting clicks and you're getting clicks from the banner but they're not opting in, Maybe there's something wrong with the opt-in page. If you're getting clicks from the banner and they are opting in, okay, the next thing is, are they buying? Did they not buy? Are they returning? Are they even coming back to your site after they've left? You know, is Because we also look at when they've opted in, we take the email addresses and run them through like Bright Verify, and we mm -hmm. pull them through that and say, okay, like, and, and by the way, thank you. You guys gave me a checkout page that rocks, by the way. I just want to say thank you for that with the, the tower data integration. But what we look at, we run through Bright Verify and say, okay, how many of these emails are legit? Because if you're saying, oh, I'm paying two dollars per, you know, per opt-in, and 20% of your emails are bogus, guess what? Your your cost per click just went up. You know, your cost per lead just went up. And we you don't want to go and completely rewrite your video sales letter only to find out that the reason why your video wasn't converting or whatever is because mm -hmm. you weren't even getting the right emails. They absolutely, just... absolutely. And we also like to look at once we run through Bright Verify, we tag like when you join the list, we actually tag in your CRM using Office Autopilot. We tag where did they come from. So if we're getting like a crap load of bogus leads from Constant Contact, we're not going to bid on Constant Contact no matter what our tracking software is saying or CRM saying these are bogus leads. Bright Verify says these leads are bogus. We're gonna we're gonna keep that in mind and not bid on those particular places. Gotcha. No, so that 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 um that makes a lot of sense. I think that's probably a good point to wrap it up here. Um, to besides Site Scout and PPV and CPV, do you have any other secret traffic sources that you want to throw out there to uh, <laughs> let stew in our brains or any other places besides? I you, everyone knows about Facebook and Twitter, but yep. if if you jump into Traffic Vance, Lead Impact, and Media Traffic in fifty on red. I promise you, either, any of those has the ability to literally melt down a server. I mean, if you say, well, Charles, we can handle 100,000 clicks an hour. Until you have handled it, you don't really know because your database is going to get slow. It's going to conk out. Believe me, I can tell you this from experience. And even though you go, but, you know, we can handle the bandwidth, make sure you got enough CPU to handle it. Because when you're creating, I mean, every time these things load, especially if you're using WordPress, you're going to bog it down. So if you use any of those, you, you have more ability than you could ever imagine to blow up a server. And if I you might, just want to do, have to title this how to get how to get enough traffic to melt down your server. Yes, if you do something called run of network, you can go to like media traffic and say you know traffic lean, lean impact and say you know what I want run a network international traffic, and wherever you send it to, I promise you the site will be down in about five and a half minutes. I mean it's just completely insane amounts of traffic. I mean, you know, telling people it's one of those things we have to understand. Like, literally nailing a server from like zero clicks with a hundred thousand clicks in a short amount of time. I mean, very few. We use a cloud-based server so we can escalate it because I've blown up, you know, like regular servers before. Yeah, you know, when you do that, it will cause issues for everybody. So I mean, that you have to understand when you get that kind of traffic, it can be a good day or bad, depending on which one you want. Depending on which side of that equation you're on. Depending on how prepared you are. No. And do not, as a side note, I learned this the hard way. When you're using what's called run of network traffic, 
Do not ever, ever under any circumstances drop a retargeting cookie because you will build like this massive retargeting list of people that probably do not want your green acai berry. I don't care, you know, you know, because you, I mean, run of network is like any traffic. Um, now we've, I mean, and I'm just tell you, run of network is extremely difficult to make work. I mean, it's just massive traffic. Only thing that works on that is like general interest type stuff. So back before, um, you know, like zip submits were like completely bogus. Um, you know, you could run run of network with a free zip submit. You could do okay on that. Um, you can, you know, it's just a crazy amount of traffic. Gotcha. Well, thanks a lot for coming on. Where can uh, people Thank you. check out and find a little bit more and keep up with you? Yeah, hop over to the MediaBuyerAssociation.com. There's a big video of me um, buttons, and you know I've got like probably 13 pages of blog videos. We do blog videos about twice a week of me yapping about stuff like this. So it's a great place to hang out. Thanks. Thanks a lot for coming on, Charles. Thanks. I enjoyed it. You have a good one. You too.